Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So, I've been going through the paperwork that came with the, uh, the new radios. And um, in the paperwork are the frequencies that are in these radios. So I've been comparing the Canadian frequencies to the U.S. frequencies. Now, things that you will find are going to be exactly the same just because it's UHF band is your 462 and your 467 areas. So your first three digits. Now those will have identicals. Okay, no big deal. That's fine. Um, it's the back end frequency. Okay, and there's always frequency deviations in any radio gear, which is which is normal, and that's fine. Um, but the big critical part here is the last four digits. Okay, under 462s and 467s, um, which if you look at this channel chart, this is the ones from the original radios that were sent to me, uh, which turned out to be the ones that weren't legal for Canada. Okay, um, now we do have um, 6 series, um, as well as 7 series, and so on. And, and when you compare and you check the frequencies, they're not even close to each other. They're far enough away from each other that there's enough separation. Now, when it comes, I, and I understand a little bit um, about ham radios too, and we have UHF on ham. Um, now, with a ham, that's a little bit different ball game of what you can and can't do. Um, but uh, these are not licensed radios, so you don't have to worry about a license with these. Kind of like GMRS in Canada, we don't have to worry about licenses, which is great. Um, and I'm still going to be comparing all of these to regular Canadian GMRS frequencies versus U.S. Um, you know, because I found that some of these U.S. frequencies here were under uh, GMRS U.S. stuff. And so it's kind of like comparing all this sort of thing. It's, it's, it's a little bit mind-boggling for some people, but once you understand it, you're okay. Um, so I'm kind of giving you guys the layman terms of all this stuff as best as I can. But... Um, what separates is we're allowed to access um, frequencies in Canada on the UHF band without a license. There are frequencies we're allowed to have, which is what these radios are about, and GMRS and FRS for us, right? So, but there are frequencies we're not allowed to have. And the same would go for the U.S. There's frequencies they're allowed to have for their stuff, and there's frequencies they're not allowed to have. And, the, and, and all other countries have the same sort of thing. And there's a wide spectrum of frequencies within just the UHF band alone. I mean, it is mental, okay, how many different combinations of frequencies there are. So we each get assigned our own sets that we're allowed, okay, bottom line. And the ones that are in here on the U.S. paperwork, none of these exist on the Canadian stuff, which is the separation here, right? Now, the other thing that I have also tested already, uh, which I will do a live test to, um, is the fact of the base station. Now, when I got my first set of radios from Sancon, um, they sent me the two handhelds and the base. Now, the replacement was just the two handhelds, which is all I cared about anyways, right? Because the base, I found, didn't really have a boatload of range. Like, it, had, it was all right. It was good, okay? Um, but... For the testing we did, the base wouldn't talk um, when I was, you know, in the main town of Powassan, for example, okay? So we had to go with the main radios. But uh, otherwise, it did have pretty good range to it. Now, the, one, the, the test I've done so far is I've tested, of course, the, the U.S. version radios to this, fine. They talk to each other. When I test the Canadian ones, all right, the Canadian radios... Uh, which I just powered them up and did a test. I mean, they had half a charge, uh, so it was more than enough. Um, the base will not talk to the Canadian versions, nor will the Canadian versions talk to the base. So both ways, okay? Um, sometimes you'll get channels that can cross each other, uh, like on a cross deviation uh, where you use GMRS radio, for example. Uh, I've got a GMRS radio, and uh, if I key it up, I can get the light to, to light up for the receive here, um, and if I talk into the GMRS, I can't hear it here. There's too much of a deviation. Now, if I go the other way, then I can be heard on the GMRS, 
So there's the difference in frequencies, all right? And this is what I'm trying to explain to you guys. So that's kind of how that works. Um, so by the time I reprogram even these US ones for all the Canadian stuff, um, the base will be totally useless, which I don't care. I mean, neither one of us in the house care about the base station anyhow. But you can buy these kits uh, from Sancon um, on Amazon.ca for Canadians, Amazon.com for the US guys and other countries. Um, and uh, you can get them, you know, a pile of base units, or you can get base and handhelds, or just handhelds. Um, there's a variety of different kits they have. And uh, they have some other really cool radios that have come out too since uh, I did the original unboxing and review of this US kit. Um, but um, anyway, so that's just to give you some insight to this um, of what's happening, all right, and where the differences are. Because if you, if you look and you say, okay, I need. I'm looking for 6625 um, in the 462 area. So there's 462 here. Uh, do we have a 6625? And we go, oh, we got fives all here. Uh, we got six eights. So we have no 66. Uh, 7125, that's under the 467s. Uh, we have 7124, but that's it. No 7125s. And we compare the next one, uh, 6875 under 467. Nope, nothing. Um, 6375 under 467, nothing. It's all sevens. It's all seven under 467 for the Canadian ones. Okay? Um, and you can keep going through the list and comparing back and forth, and you're going to see that none of these frequencies here exist here. Now, FCC certification uh, stuff. There's FCC on, on all radio equipment. FCC is even on non-radio equipment, okay? Um, it's where it comes to Industry Canada when it comes to the two-way radios. Not only do you need to have that sticker, you also must be on the channel bands that support Industry Canada certification in order to have, a, have that. So this is where these radios here for the Canadian ones not only have the sticker to accompany them, but also the frequencies are proper for Canada. So these are the frequencies that we're allowed to be on and use, whereas these ones here in Canada, on this paperwork, eh -eh, not allowed, okay? Which is why when I talked to Industry Canada originally with these radios, they said, no, they're not Can Industry Canada certified. Um, so anyways, that's what we've got for your, for your update for the channel differences, all right? So I'll, I've still got other paperwork I'm going through uh, little bits at a time. Um, are these even numbered by pages? No, I'll just leave that here. Um, but anyhow, so uh, we've also got online certifications directory, power supplies information, technology equipment, including electrical business equipment certified for Canada, etc. Uh, they've given me all this sort of stuff. Talks about the adapter, the power, the quick adapter, switching adapter, travel charger, etc., etc. Okay, so we got all that. And, uh, of course, we also have this stuff here. All right. So, and we have our certification paperwork, too. So everything's cool. Everything's normal, we'll say. Okay. But uh, I wanted to, to, to explain to you guys what the real difference is. Because some people don't understand, you know, like, what's the big deal? It's kind of like the Baofeng radios, right? These are ham radios. And um, a lot of people don't understand that just because it's, you know, you buy it from China doesn't mean you can't use it in Canada. You know, if you're a ham operator, a licensed ham operator, you know, there are sets that we're allowed to use, etc., right? Which we just use what we're allowed to use, and we stay off the other stuff, right? And no big deal. So, but ham radio is nothing like um, a straight radio like this. Like, this is an unlicensed radio, period. You know, and it's one where the user doesn't get to manipulate with stuff, right? You know, you buy the unit, that's it. There's no programming button pad or any of that for UHF. Now, you can buy straight UHF radios where you can pop in your own frequencies and stuff. You can do that. But those are licensable radios, you know, because they're under uh, hand bands, etc. Um, you know, and or commercial licensing, you know, that sort of thing. So they're, they're different. Um, these are also different. GMRS radios and FRS are also on UHF bands, but in Canada we don't require a license for FRS or GMRS, or these, um, among other radios, um, where in Canada 
for ham operators, if we want to use the ham frequencies uh, that are, are there, and plus all the spectrum of frequencies that we can use under UHF, you got to have a license for that I mean, in any country, right? At least as far as I know, every country does that. Um, I know Canada and the U.S., yeah, you got to have a ham radio to run a, or a ham radio license to run a ham radio. Um, and those channels that are on that bandwidth. So, but anyways, that's my little update for you guys on the frequency charts um, and the differences between them. And of course, like I said, I, I tested the new radios with the base station. I even tested the new radios against these. And they won't talk to each other. And that's because of those differences. And it's, it's a wide difference. You know, you'd be surprised. E even if it was as much as like a, a little a, a number between an 8 and a, a 3 at the back end of the very last number. That's enough to kick it off the difference where you can't talk to each other. You know, they have to be on the exact same frequency in order to talk. And uh, so channel means nothing. You know, 1 to 20. Um, it's the frequencies on each channel that make up that difference but anyways that's it that's all for this video stay tuned for more um, we will still have our range testing videos to go through and um, you know with stock antennas plus I have some like I said some high gain antennas I mentioned in the, the unboxing video of these new Canadian radios um, we've got some high gain 10 watt antennas that we're gonna you try out on these too and see how much more effective range uh, we can get with them uh, which would be kind of awesome if we do uh, but uh, anyways, there you go, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.